You want to know how I know Donald Trump thinks he is going to win this legal battle for the presidency? If Donald Trump really thought that it was all over, he would be dropping executive order nukes and pardons. So let me tell you this. If come December 14th, Joe Biden is inaugurated, it is going to be the most lit lame duck presidency you have ever seen. Maybe not. Maybe Trump, maybe the leftists are right, that Trump is going to try and get a deal with Joe Biden and say, OK, I won't go nuts, but please don't prosecute me. That's what the left is saying. But Joe Biden has already said he's not going to go after Trump. I mean, it's kind of an unspoken rule. You know, if Trump really did lock up Hillary, they'd come for him next. So Trump didn't do it. Trump didn't lock up anybody, huh? Although they certainly came for him. But I do think Donald Trump is going to want some kind of, I don't know. I don't think that narrative makes sense. Joe Biden's already said it, right? So here's what I think. December 14th. Let's say, let's say this is what happens. Joe Biden is certified the, the winner by the Electoral College. Trump now knows he has just over a month of being president. Julian Assange, pardon. Edward Snowden, pardon. Executive orders potentially ending birthright citizenship. I'm not entirely convinced, to be honest, but I think it's a strong possibility. The reason why I'm not entirely convinced is that Joe Biden is going to reverse everything Trump does for the most part. However, there may be a SCOTUS problem for Joe Biden. You see, Barack Obama created some policies by executive order and the Supreme Court said it was OK. Trump tried to remove them and they said it wasn't. And either way, it would jam up the system for Joe Biden as soon as he got in. Maybe Trump could essentially, you know, it reminds me of you get somebody who's living in an apartment and they refuse to pay their rent so they get evicted. So what do they do? They trash the place and they spray Hershey's syrup all over the joint. And then the place becomes ruined and they can't move anybody in. Kind of like that. I'm not saying Trump will do that, but that's a possibility too. No, I think what I think is going to happen, Trump is going to go for a ton of bold policies in his final weeks. At least that's what the Daily Mail says. They say President Trump is reportedly considering signing an executive order ending birthright citizenship before he leaves the Oval Office. On Friday, various sources told The Hill that members of the Trump administration have been discussing the issue with increasing frequency. They are hoping to push the president into taking action before Joe Biden is sworn in on January 20th. Under current law, all babies born in the U.S. are automatically granted citizenship, regardless of whether or not their parents are American. An executive order signed by Trump would likely put an end to such legal protections. The Trump administration declined to comment specifically on the issue when approached by the Hill. Instead, White House Deputy Press Secretary Judd Deere issued a statement saying, since taking office, President Trump has never shied away from using his lawful executive authority to advance bold policies and fulfill the promises he made to the American people. Some constitutional scholars say any executive order Trump signs on the issue would not hold up under the law. They argue that birthright citizenship is protected under the 14th Amendment. However, the courts have not definitively ruled on the issue. A legal challenge would almost certainly follow any executive order signed by the president. And in doing so, Trump could create a pathway for a legal challenge that does end birthright citizenship. They say, according to The Hill, the Department of Justice has been consulted about a possible birthright citizenship order, given that it would have uh, have deal have would have dealt with the legal implications of any new policy. It would have to deal. The president has previously discussed ending birthright citizenship, claiming that he can indeed enforce the action without an amendment. It was always told to me that you need a constitutional amendment. Guess what? You don't. Trump told Axios in 2018. Trump told the publication at the time that he had been talking about it with his White House counsel. It's in the process. It'll happen with an executive order. What is birthright citizenship? They say, well, I'm not going to read through all of this, but I'll give you the gist. It's basically came about my understanding um, after the end of slavery. We had a bunch of people, formerly slaves, and we need to make sure that these people were treated as full and equal citizens, though that wasn't for a long time. And many would argue that they're still not being treated completely equally. I actually think to a certain degree, that's true. Absolutely. There are many parts of this country that are very racist, but I, but I digress. The 14th Amendment was basically saying, OK, these people were born here, therefore they're citizens. But this created a really weird precedent that almost no country actually follows, that just because you're born here, you are a citizen. It gives rise to things like birth tourism, where someone will come to the U.S. from another country to have their kid 
so that kid can be dual citizens, whatever country their, their parents were from. I think that's an ex- that, I think that's exploiting the system. In fact, there are exemptions to this, that if you're like an ambassador or whatever, and you have a kid here, it doesn't, they're like, that one doesn't count, you, you know, because you're an ambassador. Why would it count for anybody else? I don't think birthright citizenship, the way it's being operated now, makes a whole lot of sense. I don't. I think the general idea about it that you're born here to residents or, you know, people who actually live here makes sense. And maybe that's the compromise. Let's say your parents are permanent residents, but not citizens. You're born here. I think that would make sense for you to be a citizen. You're, they're permanent residents. They're not going back to their home country. So you're going to grow up here. What do we do? Do we have to then say like, well, this baby then has to take a test to become a permanent resident because they're not a citizen? Or do we say, OK, this one makes sense. I think that would make sense. But then we see these other problems. What if someone is a tourist? Nah, we, that, that makes no sense. If someone's like, I'm going to fly here for a three month visa to see the sights. Well, had a kid. Nah, that doesn't make sense, right? So maybe there is something to, you know, let me, actually, let me read what the critics say. They say critics of birthright citizenship oppose the fact that illegal immigrants and visitors to the U.S. can give birth to children who automatically have American citizenship. Such children are sometimes offensively referred to as I'm not going to say what they're offensively re- referred to. A 2016 report in the L.A. Times described the phenomenon of birth tourism from China. According to the report, many wealthy Chinese citizens fly to the U.S. to give birth. This means that their children automatically become U.S. citizens, making the process of applying to top American colleges easier in the future. There is nothing in the law that makes it illegal for pregnant women to enter the U.S., a spokeswoman for the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement told the paper at the time. Birthright citizenship is not a common practice. Less than 40 countries offer birthright citizenship, and Canada is the only other Western nation which does so. Children born in Australia, New Zealand, and other countries across Europe do not automatically attain citizenship. All right. Well, why don't we adopt that standard that these other countries that we love so much do? Look, I'm not so concerned about birthright citizenship for the most part. The bigger issue is I think we're going to have a lit lame duck session. Who knows what Donald Trump is going to do? But I got some suggestions. Nonviolent drug offenders in federal prison. Pardon all of them. Okay, not all of them. Do a review process somehow, but you don't got a lot of time. Trump could maybe issue an executive order creating the commission to pardon these individuals pending a review. You know, and and, and it's a good point people brought up. There may be a violent offender who pled who who pleaded down to some like nonviolent charge just because they're like, it's easier and they'll plead to it and they'll go to prison. I'd love to see Trump pardon like just like almost everybody. Violent offenders got to stay. People who have violent histories and pleaded down got to stay. But if they're a nonviolent offender across the board, for the most part, I'm kind of okay with pardoning most of these people. And I'm not talking about drugs right now. Maybe there's some like process crime, send them home. Maybe there's some kind of, um, uh, what's, what's another good example? I don't know, stealing or trading in certain goods or something like that. I'm down for Trump to be like, we're going to get rid of this stuff. F- somewhat, somewhat. The reason I say this is because I think there are certain circumstances where people end up in prison with ridiculous sentences for really, really dumb things. Okay, I I, and and, and hear me out because I know a lot of people are saying, wait a minute, Tim, you're talking about people who stole stuff. No, no, no. Hear me out. I went over. uh, uh, There was a story in Illinois about this 18 year old kid who went into his neighbor's house. The neighbors let them gave them keys and said, we need you to watch our property while we're gone. So this 18 year old kid has the keys. He enters the property and takes a beer from the fridge and is drinking it. When the cops see the light from the fridge and they know it's a small town, they know the people weren't there. They go in and they find this kid drinking the beer. So they write it up saying burglary and cops probably should have shuffled the kid along. The kid got prison time for burglary because it was the state. The people who lived there were like, we don't care that he came in our house and took the beer. And they said, did he have permission to go in your house? Well, his parents did. Up, 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 up. Mandatory minimums. He's got to go to prison. There's certain things like that where there's a lot of people that probably should be pardoned. Donald Trump should light it up and just be like, free to go, free to go, free to go. Now, the easiest thing to do is nonviolent drug offenders. I want to see that. I'm not entirely convinced Trump is going to do anything cool or crazy. He might do things that are crazy, but uh, I'm hoping that on his way out, you know, first and foremost, pardon for Julian Assange. Get that man out of this. This is ridiculous. Let Julian Assange go. 100%. I hope Trump does something good. You know, it's really weird to me. Julian Assange used to be a hero to the left. Now he's not. Now they hate him. He was smeared. 
He was smeared by the very intelligence agencies the left claimed to oppose. And I think I know the answer as to why this is happening. You may ask yourself, why is it that so many of these leftists now completely flip flopped? They used to oppose the Obama administration. Now they're voting for Biden because it's not the same left. Ten years ago, you know, so I had Vosh, the, the socialist on my podcast. I think he's 26 or so. When I was at Occupy Wall Street and I was like 25, he was like 16. So he had no idea what was going on. I grew up with a left that was challenging the machine, the financial uh, institutions, talking about the Federal Reserve. There's an overlap between the left libertarians, and the right libertarians in that capacity. But he was 16. Now he's 26 and he doesn't know about all that. So he's not the same left. And then they start taking over the cultural institutions because there are people pandering to them for their votes. The Democrats love low information voters. And then that means people like me who are leftists on a lot of policy are not really left anymore. I think it's the funniest thing, too, when these leftists with the little rose symbols in their Twitter accounts are like, Tim Pool's not a leftist and he claims he is. I kind of always claimed I was an independent left leaning. But yeah, I actually am pretty socialistic in a lot of ways. And a lot of people don't know this. If only they actually saw how I ran my business, they'd be like, well, that's the kind of business that I want to work at. <laughs> yeah, because I don't run it like a ruthless capitalist. I don't. Maybe I'd do better if I did, but I don't because I am pretty left leaning on, on a lot of issues. But I digress. Donald Trump. Let's see some pardons. If Donald Trump actually gets a second term, I think it'll be just bedlam. But maybe because he's not going to get reelected, he'll be like, my first order of business is going to be Julian Assange free to go, Edward Snowden free to go, all these nonviolent drug offenders free to go. Wishful thinking. Huh? I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up tomorrow at 10 a.m. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.